yes i think yeah streaming has started and this is the youtube link for today's session also we will have a session tomorrow too i think it's not been scheduled yet but it will get scheduled and you'll get a message whatsapp invite also okay uh, let me share my screen Yes. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Firstly, I will just share uh, the question with you all, and then I will switch to my journal screen. So, question number three is about uh, given an integral to us. Uh, this is the question, right? Given an integral to us. Uh, which is from 0 yes. to infinite, 1 by x plus root 1 plus x square whole square dx, find the value of 3a. Correct? Yes, sir, precisely. Okay, yeah. Okay, uh, let's... Let me stop this. Yes, uh, I... Oh, my... Black screen is missing. Okay, uh, let us start. AQ 9.3, question 3. It says, given an integral 1 by x plus square root 1 plus x square whole square dx okay so we have to find uh, 3a okay uh, within the first glance we don't know any kind of properties that can directly uh, be used and get this definite integral right we have to do something else uh, and the first and foremost thing that comes to our mind is uh, we use some either substitute so these are the two things that comes to our mind right either substitute something or if you see these kind of denominators where there is some square roots try to eliminate those square roots how can i eliminate the square roots in the denominator you multiply and divide with some term So either you use substitution or if you see this kind of x plus some square root 1 plus x square, uh, the best thing we can do is uh, you just multiply and divide the in, inside integrand uh, with something. When you multiply that, the denominator just become uh, the square root term gets, gets vanished in the denominator. Can we think of something like that? Any any term? Anybody? So we need a term. Multiplying that to the denominator removes that square root. Okay, I will give you the hint. Will this term work? yes okay so now what so this could be our very first step okay so what could we do is take this term you multiply and divide multiply and divide this to the integral 
Okay. So if I do that, what will I get? I will get this. So 0 to infinite 1 by x plus square root square root 1 plus x square whole square dx will now become 0 to infinite. In the numerator, we will have x minus square root 1 minus x square whole square. And in the denominator, we will have x plus root 1 plus or x sir, square. Uh, can't we take the uh, square outside because technically we have one square upon our term which is squared. So we can also rewrite it as one upon our term whole squared. Uh, sorry, I didn't get one upon one upon x plus root one plus x square uh, the whole square. Hmm. You first square it and then is that what you are saying? No, no, I am saying um, uh, before we multiply it with uh, uh, the discriminant, I think that's what is, it's called. Hmm. Uh, sir, can't, can't we write our expression in the form of 1 upon x plus root 1 plus uh, x square, the whole square? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, now we square the entire thing, right? Okay, and you multiply it in the inside thing. Yeah, yeah. So uh, both both are same, both right? Just be easier. No, no, both are same, right? So either you do x minus root one plus x square and x minus root one plus x square inside the square, or directly multiply this particular term. Both are. Are same. Uh, both okay. Are same. You just. You are just combining numerator and denominator square. Here we are writing it explicitly. Numerator square goes to numerator and denominator square goes to denominator. That's it. Sorry, one plus, right? Whole square. Okay. So both both are same. So instead of writing two squares like this, you 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 are saying that you write it like this. Whole square. Both are same. Yes, Both yes. works. Yeah. Now, what happens to the denominator? X square minus uh, what bracket minus one plus x square. Ah, so what will it be? So it is a plus b into a minus b. Minus what, yeah. uh, what will it become? A square minus b square. Yeah. Uh, so here a is x. So this will become x square minus b is square root 1 plus x square whole square. Is this minus okay? Yeah. Minus 1. Uh, and there is whole square, right? Outside. So plus 1. Uh -huh. So the denominator becomes plus 1. Did everybody got this? Yes. Sir. Got? Yeah. Now the numerator is simply x minus 1 plus x square whole square dx. I just so we can expand. Ignored, uh, ignored denominator because the denominator is 1. Okay. This x square and this x square will get cancelled and there will be minus 1. And if you square that, it will become plus 1. Now you expand. You take the square. What will I get? x square minus 2 times x into root 1 plus x square plus root 1 plus x square whole square dx. Correct? a minus b whole square. Yes. a square minus 2ab plus b square okay now if you further simplify this we will get something like okay if you further so simplify now we i think um, separate the integrals and our middle term in that we'll probably take 1 plus x square as u, then uh -huh. will become du. You, 
okay so now this will become x square minus 2x root 1 plus x square plus 1 plus x square dx but we are going to a dead end i guess so this will become 2x square plus 1 dx I, I just i'm just separating the integrals and plus sorry minus integral 0 to infinite 2x square root 1 plus x square dx now this is easy but since the limits are from 0 to infinite we are slightly struck Okay, maybe uh, multiply and dividing is not working. Then the other method that is left out is substitute. See, the thing is, you should try it out. That's it. You should try, try different ways, and you just have to identify the simplest way. Okay. So, so that was the issue. In the uh -huh. hint, it was mentioned uh, substitute uh, t equals to square root of 1 plus x square. But then from that, I was not able to figure out what to do after that. So what was the hint given? Uh, yeah. T is equals to square root 1 plus x square. Yeah. OK. OK. Uh, let's try that. Substitute some t is equals to square root 1 plus x square. So this is try to. Okay. First try, it looks like uh, we got 2x square plus 1. But if you integrate this, the limits are indefinite uh, limits right improper so this is an improper integral and even after integrating this that either goes to infinite and that is creepy you will get infinite minus infinite which is not solvable so this is not the method so let's try out uh, using the hint now if i use this i will get something like if t is this then what will be dt? Half divided by in the root 1 plus x square into 2x. Uh, so uh, finally, when you do that, you will get x by root 1 plus x square dx. So it will be half times 1 by root 1 plus x square into 2x. So that 2 and this 2 will get cancelled out and you will get this. Right? Uh, so now 0 to infinite. Again, here we are dx. Now, sir, huh? Sir, uh, is the dt is equal to 2x divided by root of 1 plus x square? No, no, no. There will be half, right? So it's like composition of two functions. One is square root x and another one is 1 plus x square. When you differentiate square root x, you will get half. 1 by uh, half 1 plus x square whole power half minus 1 into then you should take the derivative of 1 plus x square and that becomes 2x. And this 2 and this 2 will get cancelled out and you will be left with x in the numerator. Half minus 1 will become minus half and that will become 1 by square root 1 plus x square. Okay. okay. Uh, now, again, uh, when t, when x goes to 0, t goes to 1. When x goes to infinite, t goes to infinite. Okay. Now, the limits will change from 1 to infinite. 1 by. Now, what is x? So, if t is square root 1 plus x square. Now, what will be x in terms of t? p square minus 1 of the whole root. Whole root. Right? Now this will be root over t square minus 1 plus t. Again, whole square into dx is. So dx, again, you write it in terms of uh, t is here. So dx will be square root 1 plus x square is t, t by x 
and x again is square root t square minus 1 dt. Now t by square root t square minus 1. Is this OK? Looks OK. 1 to infinite t by now if you what should we do now this will become t square minus 1 plus t square plus 2 times square root t square minus 1 into t all into square root t square minus 1 where is this going? Okay, even this looks like again we are into that something plus square root thing, right? What if we try x plus root 1 plus x square itself? Try number 3. Ah, try 3. So this is my try. Even if this, this didn't work, then we have to go search for another methods. Now, let's say you uh, x plus root 1 plus x square is the substitution. Substitute this. Now, as x goes to 0, u goes to 1. As x goes to infinite, u goes to infinite. And what is du? du will be 1 plus x by square root 1 plus x square dx. Correct? Yes, sir. Correct. So, so far so good. Okay, looks good. Now, if I write dx, this will become uh, square root 1 plus x square divided by, again, x plus root 1 plus x square du. So I brought this term to the left-hand side, and I just wrote that. Uh, you du. have it wrong. Yeah, yeah, du. I guess. No, sir. 1 plus under root 1 plus x square plus x divided by under root 1 plus x square. OK. So this is root 1 plus x square plus x by root 1 plus x square dx, right? Now bring this root 1 plus x square to the left hand side. And this, uh, that will come into the numerator. Bring this x plus root 1 plus x square to the left hand side. That will go to the denominator. Correct, right? This is correct, right? Is this calculation OK? Looks OK to me. Yeah, looks correct, correct. This is correct. You can cross it. See, I am substituting u as x plus root 1 plus x square. What will you get when you take derivative on both sides? du will become, uh, if you derivate x with respect to dx, it will become 1 plus when you derivate this root 1 plus x square that is what we discussed here also it will become x by root 1 plus x square yes sir correct correct so this will become this and then this and i'm just bringing this uh, terms to the du side not on the dx side i'm writing dx in terms of du okay now if you see the denominator which you got go, which we got on the right hand side is exactly u and root 1 plus x square is again u minus x again there is a bit of uh, calculation coming uh, inside so we have to write now u uh, x in terms of u 
right this becomes square root 1 plus x square all divided by u du what we got is dx is equals to square root 1 plus x square still there is square root 1 plus x square du which we have to write in terms of u now our goal uh, is to write root 1 plus x square in terms of u where u is x plus root 1 plus x square now from here uh, you have to do a bit of uh, computation bring x to the left hand side you will have 1 plus x square square on both sides if you square on both sides you will get u square minus 2 ux plus x square is equals to 1 plus x square now uh, this x square this x square will get cancelled out and you will get something like u square Uh, minus 2 ux minus 1. Minus 2 ux uh, is equals to 1. So from here, x will be equal to u square minus 1 by 2u. Correct? u square minus 1 by 2u. Yes, sir. Correct. Hmm. Now, what we need? We need square root 1 plus x square. What will be square root 1 plus x square? I will write it here itself. So square root 1 plus x square. This will be 1 plus. Now u square minus 1 by 2u whole square. This will become 1 plus u power 4 minus 2u square plus 1 divided by 4u square. Right. And if you simplify this. This will become 4u square plus u power 4 minus 2u square minus 1 divided by 4u square. Okay. I mean, now, sir, I was just asked, wondering, hmm. does, I mean, is it so complicated, this question? Ah, uh, looks so complicated. Uh, see, if I do the substitution, I looks like it goes to the right direction because, see, you will vanish square root from here. Uh, so this is plus 1. So the numerator, if you see, you will get something like u power 4 plus 2u square plus 1 divided by 4u square. And if you carefully observe the numerator, it is just u square plus 1 whole square. And the denominator is 2u whole square. And this will get cancelled out. You will get u square plus 1 by 2u. So we got root 1 plus x square as u square plus 1 by 2u. I will tell you why uh, this is uh, helping us. Because now, if you see, the square root terms are vanished all over. So here there is some square root. But now square root 1 plus x square will be simply u square plus 1 by 2u. Now this is u square plus 1 by 2u. Whole divided by there is one more u du. Now this will be u square plus 1 by 2u square du. Now we got dx in terms of du and u and also the limits are very well known and the substitution we took is u is equals to x plus root 1 plus x square. So that means this whole thing 0 to infinite 1 by x plus root 1 plus x square whole square dx will now simply be the limits will be from 1 to infinite and since I took the whole denominator as uh, u now this will become 1 by u square okay now what is dx we got dx we got as u square plus 1 by 2 u square du so this will be u square plus 1 by 2u square du. Now you see there are no square root terms. So I'll just take this. What we got is uh, 1 to infinite 
just a second. One to infinite. One by u square. So u square plus one by two u power four. U square plus one by two u power four du. Okay. Now this can be solvable because one to infinite. If I split this, you will get one by two u square plus one by two u power four. Du. Now I can split the integral. One by two u square du plus one to infinite one by two u power four d. Now these two integrals are computable, right? So this is simply one by two one to infinite u power minus two du. So we know u power something, sir. X power y integral. What will be? What will it be? So what is integral x power y? Uh, x power y plus one upon a plus one. X power a plus one. So here in place of x we have plus g plus c. Ah, okay, plus c. Okay. So here it is definite integral, so we don't need that plus c. Okay, so this will be u power minus four du, and now this is simply using this formula, we get u power minus two plus one by minus two plus one, and the limits are infinite and one plus half into u power minus four plus one by minus four plus one, and again here also the limits are from. Infinite and one, sir. Hmm. How we uh, how we find out the integral of the given activity sum? U power. What? Uh, sorry. Activity question, sir. Which activity? Uh, the first example which we done at the beginning of this class. I think this is the very first question only. This is the very first question we are doing, but we tried different ways. First two ways didn't work out very well. Uh, try three took a bit of time, but it eventually helped us. And this is something like uh, we get u power minus one by minus one, and the limits are infinite minus one plus half times u power minus three minus three. Limits are infinite one. So you see, when uh, the limit is tending to infinite, u value is taking to infinite. U is in u goes to the denominator. Right. This is if I further simplify this, we get minus two u, and the limits are infinite and minus one. And this will also be minus one by six u cube, infinite and one. Okay, so when u tends to infinite, that will go to zero. So the first thing is zero minus of minus one by two times one. So this finishes off uh, this thing, and then there is minus, and again uh, as u tends to infinite, one by infinite will go to zero minus one by Six times uh, one cube. Now, if we simplify this, this will become half minus of uh, minus one by six, which will become half plus one by six, which will give us uh, four by six and two by three. We will let me just check whether this is correct. Then I can. Yes, sir. This is correct. This sir, is correct. the answer is basically two by three into three because they are asking for three. Ah, I. okay, okay, so yeah, the yeah. The answer is two. So I, so whatever so far we computed, we computed the value of uh, i, but they asked for three uh, i. So this will be two by three times uh, three, which will become two. Okay, so it. See that is what. See every problem just needs a different tries. So if you if one way didn't work out, try using different combination, different ways. 
okay we tried multiplying and dividing it by something we did it so to see everything what we did is uh, one thing is common we are trying to eliminate that square root thing even in this multiplying and dividing thing or the second substitution so even the second substitution we somehow wanted to eliminate that square root that's why we took it as that as as that as t but even then again it is turning out to be something square root which we are unable to avoid but in the last try uh, trying it out like this what happened is eventually there are no square roots the final expression looks like this look like this okay so in three tries we tried to remove that square root two methods worked uh, didn't work the final method worked luckily luckily okay so is this is this okay so this this is the substitution that we should take for this particular question this substitution works okay sir okay yeah and similarly let's try out uh, doing aq 9.3 question 4 Okay, so question four is about uh, given like this. Again, uh, given an integral, definite integral zero to one, four by square root x into one minus x dx. Okay, again, uh, even here we had this. square root coming into the picture and inside square root there is some ugly expression like x minus x square all right uh again we we can try different ways uh, you can give me which way we can try so after looking this what is the first thing comes to your mind and we can try it out using that anybody again uh, our primary goal should always be equal to should always be like if there is some square roots in the picture we try to eliminate the square root from the integrand try to eliminate the square root uh, by using some method by using uh, either by using uh, substitution or multiply divide by term or uh, there is one more method uh, which is also given as hint for this question you try to make the inside the uh, thing as something to the power square even if you do that then that square and square root will get cancelled right so or you make the inside expression as square or something inside expression as square okay so what I, what i meant is x into 1 minus x should be written as something like a square some a we don't know, or some f of x whole square some function of x sitting inside it but if you can write it as whole square then the square root and this square this the square will get cancelled and f of x will remain where it will not contain any square roots okay we should try to eliminate this sir yeah as there is the square root in the denominator we will be representing that inside term as some t square or u square like that as ha 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 so you should now maybe try one we will try try this out so we have x into 1 minus x correct right? now we will try to make this as uh, some known square plus something so something to the square plus something even if you get that uh, we know how to uh, okay for this we actually need this thing 
So I I don't know most of you knows this expression or not, but this is sine inverse something something sine inverse x I believe. So is this sine inverse x? Sir, uh, there was some formula, isn't it? Related, it's called like the trigonometric inverse formula. Ah, huh, but uh, uh, that is that is one plus one by root one plus x square, I think. It's not one minus x square. So one by root one minus x square dx. Uh, if you integrate it from minus one to one. It's like you are integrating the unit circle from minus 1 to 1. You will get the area under the curve, which is equals to pi. And since it is symmetric, 0 to 1 will be pi by 2. Okay. okay, maybe I will just spend one minute for this. So this is sir i think uh, i got a bit confused so i think the derivative of sine inverse x is 1 by uh, root upon 1 minus x square ah huh. correct if you know that you can use that but uh, people who don't know that this is just this so this is this is the unit circle okay if it is unit circle the expression would be like this right x square plus y square is equals to 1 and from here if i if i have to write it as a function i have to eliminate the denominator part sorry uh, sorry negative x x negative y axis part only then it will become a function correct now this is a function and this function can be written as f of x uh, square root 1 minus x square. Right. So this is square root 1 minus x square. Now, if I have to find or integrate, or if I have to find the area of this, No, not the area. If I have to find the length of this arc, if I have to find the length of this arc, this length. How will I find? So people who have watched the lecture, you would know this. How would I find? I will consider. See everything, if you want to find anything, you start with small thing, you just add those small things. Riemann says that, right? So you compute this length, uh, which is from delta x and x plus delta. So a and a plus delta. Some small, you compute this length, and then you vary this a and deltas, not delta, maybe a, and you will add this up. Right, that is how you do right now if you do that this will slowly become so we are varying a here now if this is the thing if i zoom this 100 times this will become like this this thing if i zoom this 100 times there will be some small, almost a straight line. And this is delta. And there will also be some change here, this height. This height can be easily measured because uh, this point is f of a plus delta. And this point will be f of a. And this difference will be f of a plus delta minus f of a. Right, this difference. 
now we are we are trying to find this length now this is an right angle triangle and you can use that so the length this l will be l square actually will be this delta square plus f of a plus delta minus f of a whole square so is this is this okay we are we are trying to get this length a small delta length where this point is a and this point is a plus delta let's assume now if that is the case then this would be horizontal difference is delta the vertical difference we would get is since this is the function f of x the top point will be f of a plus delta the bottom point will be f of a and the difference will be f of a plus delta minus f of a and this will form a right angle triangle one side uh, where the sides the hypotenuse is the length which we wanted its square will be equal to square of the two two sides which will be delta square plus f of a plus delta minus f of uh, a whole square now if you carefully see this this is if you know f prime of a this can be written as limit delta tends to 0 f of a plus delta minus f of a divided by delta okay correct and as delta uh, is very small we approximated this f prime of a as f of a plus delta minus f of a by delta so from here f of a plus delta minus f of a can be approximately written as uh, delta times f of a f prime of a So this is approximately written as uh, delta times f prime of a. Now you just substitute that. You will get L square is delta square plus delta f prime of a whole square. Now L square will be delta square plus delta square f prime of a whole square. Now if I take square root, this will become delta times square root of 1 plus f prime of a whole square and this l is this l at this point a this is the length l and this a can go from minus 1 to plus 1 sir which is the l sir l is this length this small length which we are trying to find you mean the hypotenuse of the small triangle? Arc, uh, arc, arc, arc length, small arc length. Yeah, this hypotenuse. Okay. This is the L. And we know this as the delta and this as this. And this also has an approximation uh, from the derivatives, which is f delta f prime of A. If I substitute that, L, we got it in terms of some delta and 1 plus f prime of A whole square. Where delta is this small uh, difference and this A is the point here, this point, the point where we computed that arc length. And this A, if I start from minus 1 to plus 1, that will compute me and add all the values that will give me the complete arc length. Right? I, I start from minus 1 and I will compute this small L arc length this small arc length similarly i will compute this 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 like this small 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 infinitely small if it is infinitely small that is nothing but the integration integral is el elongated sum infinite sum to one and what are we summing up these lengths we are summing up, which is the square root 1 plus f prime of not a now that a is the variable here if i say a is going from minus 1 to plus 1 then this is f prime of a whole square now this small change delta is nothing but d a okay if i write it in terms of x this will be, this is what it will be. It's just a variable change okay and if f of x is this, if you compute f prime of x, you will get uh, minus x by 
square root 1 minus x square. Try this out, you will get this. Sir, hmm. why are we uh, including the uh, mean value theorem also, sir, in this case? Uh, where did I include this? this. Yeah, that's of A is equal to that one, sir. Okay, so this is the derivative definition, right? Definition of the derivative, right? Okay, sir. Where did mean value theorem come here? I don't know. We do, we know the definition Problem. of derivative, right? Everything looks the same, so. <laughs> hmm? With the form, it looks, is it? Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, but it's not. It's just basic definition of derivative. So the thing and is, then mean value yeah. theorem. We have C in the denominator. But uh -huh. in, I mean, these sums, I mean, these formulas, they rather look kind of the same. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, okay, here I am very much clear that this is, we are talking about the derivative. Okay. Okay, ultimately why I said all these things is because to convince you that, again, uh, if I do this f prime of x, you will get this. And then if you substitute that here and compute the limit, you will finally arrive to this. You will get something like minus 1 to 1, uh, 1 by square root 1 minus x square dx is pi. Okay. Because see, this is a half circle. And half circle perimeter is pi, right? Full circle perimeter has 2 pi because the radius is 1. So half circle is pi. We know that it is pi. And if you substitute all these things, you will get something like this expression on the left hand side. And that left hand side will be equal to pi. And this is an important result. Also, along with this result, you can also write this as 2 times of 0 to 1, 1 by square root 1 minus x square where dx. Why? Because you see this length, this length is just twice, sorry, this whole length is just twice of this yellow length, yellow curve, right? You just take this two, invert this and keep it on the this side, keep it on left hand side, you will become complete half circle. So if I simply compute the length of this, twice that will give me the whole half circles perimeter. Uh, in other words, twice of uh, going from 0 to 1, 1 by root uh, 1 minus x square dx will give me this. And this whole thing is pi. This implies that uh, 0 to 1, 1 by square root 1 minus x square dx will be pi by 2. So this expression you need to solve this question. So if we are OK that this uh, 0 to 1, 1 by root 1 minus x square dx is equals to pi by 2, then we are ready to solve this. So take this. Now we are taking this. We are not proving this again. We are taking this that this integral is equals to pi by 2. Now what we will do is we will try to come up with like this 1 minus square root 1 minus x square. If we can come up, that would be great. Right. So what we can do is we can expand this x minus x square. Now we have minus x square here, which is uh, minus of x square minus x. Okay, again, from here to here. Why minus of? Because we have something like a square, not minus a square, right? a square minus 2ab plus b square. We are trying to bring it in that form. So now minus of, we have already a square with us. a is also sitting here. But I need 2 here. If I have 2 here, I have to multiply it with 1 by 2. So that 2 times 1 by 2 times x will again give me back this x. 
Now the first two expressions I got a square minus two two a b. So this this would be my b. And if this is my b, I need b square term also. So that means I will add b square. If I am adding b square, I should also subtract b square. Because eventually this expression should be equivalent to this expression. If I just cancel this out and trace back, I should get this expression. So if I am adding something, I should subtract the same thing. If I am multiplying something, something, I should divide it with the same thing. So that is how expressions work. Sir. Yeah. Sir, why are you multiplying by 2 and dividing by 2? Because I need something like a square minus 2ab, right? 2 also should be in my term. Okay, right? sir. Uh, so if if I need two here, I should also multiply one by two so that it will be get cancelled out and I will have one minus x. Back. Completing square method. Ah, uh, completing square in some. Okay. Okay. Now what we have is minus of x square minus two ab plus b square. This whole thing is x minus half whole square. And this is minus one by four. And now if I multiply minus throughout, I will get 1 by 4 minus x minus half whole square, this whole root, right, we have whole root. This will be in the denominator. Okay. Now I will rewrite this whole stuff, 0 to 1, 4 divided by square root 1 by 4 minus x minus half whole square dx. Now give me a best substitution that will work on this and it will give me very nice 1 by root 1 minus x square kind of thing. Sir, could you please repeat the question again, sir? So, this is uh, so the question which I asked now, is it? Yes. Uh, so, now we reach this point, but uh, what we know is 0 to 1, 1 by root 1 minus x square dx thing, which is pi by 2. Now, this is still something like 1 by 4 minus x minus half whole square like this. Give me a good substitution that will uh, bring us something like root in the denominator, bring us something like root 1 minus x square kind of form. Okay, at least we need one one here, right? Sir, how did this four come in numerator? Ah, that is given in the question. No, ah, it's given in the question, right? It's it's in the numerator. Oh yeah, right. My bad. Yeah. Yeah. So it's in the numerator. So this is this. Now I need one here, okay? But I have one by four here. What can I do? To make this one multiply each term by two multiply each term by two if i multiply each term by two what should i do more uh, i mean will uh, we just multiply, multiply numerator one? and denominator by two so then when two goes in then it becomes uh, one minus right. two x so we will do the same thing we will multiply and divide it by two so this will become two times four all divided by now 2 times, now if I take 2 inside, that will become square root 4 goes inside, right? And this will become 1 minus 4 times x minus half whole square, okay? Now again, if I take 4, all, four also inside the square, what will I get? again? 
this will simply be integral 0 to 1 numerator is 8 divided by square root 1 minus this 4 should be taken into the square so write this as 2 square so 2 goes inside and when 2 multiplies to x it will become 2x minus 2 times a half will be 1 so this will be 2x minus 1 whole square dx is this okay So here, intermediate step, what we did is multiply and divide by 2 to integrate. And here, just some sort of manipulation. Is this, is this okay? How I write, how I wrote this 4 times x minus half whole square as simply 2x minus 1 whole square. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, now we are almost okay. We have 8 in the numerator, but it can be brought outside and made as 1. And we also have 1 here. We are still having 2x minus 1. But at, th at that place, I need something like variable square. That's it. What should I do? Yes, sir, we can consider 2x minus 1 to be uh, u. Great. That's that's the thing. So substitution. Sir. Uh. Sir. Uh... In the last previous step, 4x, 4 into x minus 1 by 2 whole square, how it becomes in the oh. 2x minus 1. So, 4 times x minus half whole square, 4 I will write it as 2 square times x minus half whole square. Now, since they are just squares, uh, this 2 times x minus half whole square, right? Now, 2 times x is x, 2x. Minus 2 times half is 1. So this will become 2x. This will become this. 2x minus 1. Yes, sir. Understood. Okay. Now you just substitute u is equal to 2x minus 1. If I substitute this, now as x tends to 0, u goes to minus 1. And as x tends to 1, u goes to plus 1. And du is? 2dx. Correct. So all we have everything that is required 0 to 1, 8 by square root 1 minus 2x plus 1, sorry, 2x minus 1 whole square dx will now become minus 1 to 1 because the limits are from for you, the limits are from minus 1 to 1. And the numerator is as it is 8. Denominator will be 1 by 1 minus u square times dx is so from here you will get dx as half du so half du this and this will cancel and you will be having 4 here now if I pull out 4 outside minus 1 to 1 1 by square root 1 minus u square du and just now we spoke this is a very standard integral this will be equals to pi once if this is pi what we have is i is 4 pi but they are something like i by pi from here i by pi will be 4 okay so for solving this uh, aq 9.3 question 4 you need not this maybe this is sufficient you need this and this is very well explained in the lecture also why this is pi yes sir understandable and uh, sir one more thing i wanted to point out there is probably an error in a uh, practice assignment question number one and two okay okay yeah yeah please please do uh, let us know uh, what are the errors so sir if you try solving question one first of all uh, there is no viable approach to solve it uh, like it's okay. more towards i was unable to do that but in question two clearly when i solved it uh, I did not get any expression. Uh, so, I mean, you can take a look and yeah, if, yeah, yeah. I'm just opening it. If just it doesn't require a, minute, a lot of time to solve, it will be great if you could uh, try it once. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, the first question, right? 
it is given as something like f of x whole square as x square phi minus x by phi plus x. Yeah. So the formula is uh, yeah integration of zero to five of one plus, plus x square f of, f of x the whole square, uh, which is basically one plus x square um, into five minus x upon five plus x. If I'm not wrong, that's the formula. Ah, uh, it's volume, right? It will be pi f of x square, right? Zero to five. Oh yeah, sorry, my bad. Um, I messed up the formula again. Yeah, it's pi into yeah f of, f of x, x whole square dx, right? Yeah, yeah, correct. Uh, then uh, I think things will work out. So basically, right. we just need to integrate uh, this uh, this integral, which is given x square into five minus x upon uh, five plus x. We just gotta integrate it. Mm hmm. Right, and the second one kind of requires ln integral x ln x ln one plus x dx. I mean, it first uh, requires us to use by parts. By parts, correct. Use by parts, but uh, use it on uh, x. So, sir, I tried using by parts on uh, considering both, x both, huh? the log of one plus x as u. But if we go according to our uh, according to like I late. Uh, th then uh, we should give priority to log first, and uh, technically we should consider log one plus x as u, right? Correct, correct. So even when we do that, um, for some reason I wasn't get getting any viable answer. Okay. Uh, or did you try it out the other way, uh, taking x as u? But I think it. Yeah, sir. So I tried it both ways, but okay. Yeah, I will. I will try it out. Uh, but before that, I think okay. I I will go there. Uh, others, do you have any questions? Do I have to go through week nine? I can go through it. Or if you have doubts, you can raise your doubts here. Anybody? Uh, uh, do you guys gone through? Have you guys gone through uh, week nine? Note that uh, deadline won't be postponed. Okay. Don't hope that uh, this will push to Friday or something. So this comes under eligibility criteria. So we are not pushing the deadline. And the second thing is, if you have any doubts, uh, we can discuss. Or else I will just take the doubts which was asked by Navai. Okay, is it okay to others? Yes, no. Yeah, continue. Yeah, thanks. Okay, then uh, let me try solving PA question two. Okay, uh, the question is uh, it's an Indefinite integral, uh, which doesn't have any limits. Integral x ln 1 plus x dx is given as f of x times ln x plus 1. ln x plus 1 and minus x square by 4 plus ax plus Where b is the constant of integration. Okay. Now the primarily uh, they are they have given some four options, and within that four options, they were asking us to find f of x and a. Uh, so the goal is uh, is to find f of x. And this constant u. Right. Uh, people who know what is I late, so you have to follow this. Uh, you can use this as priority. Okay. So first is uh, I. What is I? Imaginary. 
What is I? Inverse trigonometry. Ah, inverse trigonometry. Sorry, inverse trigonometry, logarithmic functions, algebraic functions, trigonometric functions, exponential functions. Okay. So you you will just follow this method. If we follow this, if there is log, uh, log is before uh, algebraic expressions. So we consider ln one plus x as u. Uh, before that, let let me write. Uh, Integral u v dx as u integral v dx minus integral du integral v dx. Right. This is one way I remember. There are uh, many other expressions you can have for this. Uh, and uh, everything can comes down to this expression. Okay, now u u is ln one plus x, and v is uh, x. If you use, substitute that, we get integral ln one plus x x dx as ln one plus x integral x dx minus integral of du. So du is a derivative of ln one plus x. That is one by one plus x into integral x dx. Okay. Now, if you simplify this, this will become ln one plus x. Integral x will be x square by two okay. uh, minus integral of x square by Again, this integral is x square by 2. So this will become 2 times 1 plus x dx. OK. And yeah, this is this is where the challenge lies. This is done. And this requires a small modulation in the numerator. What I will do is I will just simply subtract and add 1 in the numerator. Uh, what will I get by doing this is this. So all these are just uh, uh, minute manipulations which you can play around. 1 plus x dx minus integral 1 by. Correct, right? Yeah. Minus 1 by 2 times 1 plus x dx. Okay, now this becomes which is one to now this is as it is one ln one plus x x square by two and minus this thing. If you see the numerator, numerator is x minus one times x plus one, and x plus one and x plus one will get cancelled out. This and this will get cancelled out, and it will become x minus one. There is minus here, so you can write it as plus r integral 1 minus x dx this is also okay and now the last thing is minus half integral 1 by 1 plus x dx and what do you think integral 1 by 1 plus x dx will be log of 1 plus x ln 1 plus x use uh, if you if you guys are confused use substitution again u as 1 plus x you will just get ln 1 plus x back. So now this is ln 1 plus x into x square by 2 plus this is half. If I integrate this, I will get x minus x square by 2, correct, minus half ln 1 plus x. And there will be finally a constant b. Now if I group the terms, uh, this ln 1 plus x terms together, I will get ln 1 plus x into x square minus 1 by 2. So this is x square by 2 and this is minus 1 by 2. So x square minus 1 by 2 plus half times x minus 
x square by 4 minus x square by 4 plus the constant b. Now, here. Sir. Huh. Sir, I am clear up to that uh, h minus 1 divided by 2 dx minus 1 by 2 1 plus h. Up which one? Which that, one? X I'm minus? Answer. I am clear up to that thing which you have uh, written in the R answer. After that, I cannot understand. So after that, uh, if you are clear till here, after that, the numerator and denominator has a common factor in this particular expression, which is x minus 1. So write x square minus 1 as x minus 1 into x plus 1. Yes, sir. Uh, then x plus 1 is in the numerator, also will be in the denominator, right? Yes, sir. Both things will cancel out and you will be left with x minus 1 in the numerator. Yes, sir. And there is minus outside, right? Yes, sir. Uh, then this will just simply become integral if i just take minus inside it will become my mi 1 minus x right yes sir all right uh, this expression is okay and then this is as it is right this is this is just like that and then integral 1 by 1 plus x dx will be ln 1 plus x you can cross check this by just differentiating this this expression ln 1 plus x if you differentiate this, you will get 1 by 1 plus x. So, integral of 1 by 1 plus x dx will be ln 1 plus x. Okay. And if you integrate this 1 minus x, this is just integral 1 minus x dx. So, integral 1 dx is x and minus integral x dx is x square by 2. So, that will collectively become x minus x square by 2. There is half outside. So, half times x minus x square by 2 minus half times ln x plus 1 and there will be a constant. Now, I have ln 1 plus x into x square by 2 here and ln 1 plus x into minus half here. I can take ln 1 plus x common out in from these two terms. If I take that, I will have x, x square by 2 minus half and that can be written as x square minus 1 by 2. And this is half times x minus x square by 4. Okay. This is just simplification. Now, initially it is given that given expression is like this. Now, if you compare, we can see that f of x is this and a is half. Okay, because you see this x minus x square by 4 minus x square by 4 is there, b is there, b is there. x coefficient is what a is, which is half, and ln 1 plus x coefficient is f of x. So ln 1 plus x coefficient is x square minus 1 by 2. Right? Is the answer wrong? Is the answer given the same? These two are the answers. Uh, Namai, is this okay? Is this okay to all uh, who have seen this logarithms part also in this particular week? Sir. Hmm. After that, x square minus 1 divided by 2 uh, plus 1 by 2x minus x square by 4 plus b, how are we simplifying, sir? Which, which line? This line or this line? The last yellow line, sir. Last yellow line? Yes. Sir. Ah, here, see, in the question, it is given that the answer looks like this. Okay. Sir. Okay. And the answer we got is after integrating this. Okay. Now, what yes. we have to do is we just have to compare things. That's it. So, here there is f of x. It is given in the problem, it is given as f of x. Here we got. In that place, we got uh, the expression as x square minus 1 by 2. 
yes, so f of x will be x square minus 1 by 2. That's it. Compare. Just compare the terms, individual terms. Yes. yes okay. Yeah. So, uh, sir, could you also check question 1? Okay, let's, let's do question 1 also then. If there are no doubts, I am happy to take your doubts continuously, man. I don't, I don't bother taking doubts. Okay. Sure, sir. Yeah. Sir. Hmm. Sir, uh, and I also have some doubts in the week eight also, sir. Okay. After this. Okay. Uh, question. P A. Question one. Okay. And the question is all about uh, computing the volume and rotation stuff. Okay. So this is given that f of x whole square is something like this x square pi minus x divided by pi plus x. Okay. And the graph is also given. Graph also looks nice. So it is like this. So this is f of x. <laughs> this is f of x to us. OK. Now, what they said is, you consider from 0 to 5. So this is from 0 to 5. And now you start revolving around x axis. So what they said is, you take this fish shaped thing and also consider only from 0 to 5. If I consider only from 0 to 5, you don't need this. Now you just rotate it along x axis. Okay. You revolve. If you revolve, it forms a balloon, balloon kind of shape. Right? And, and we want volume of that balloon. Okay. Again, this also has some tricks which was discussed in the lecture, how we can find volumes of uh, some revolved up, uh, solids obtained by revolving around x axis. So what you do is everything you see in week 9 is all about if you want anything to compute large volume or area or even length, everything you start with minute, small, you compute small uh, area and add it sequentially. Even here also, if you can compute the volume or the area, so this will slowly become an area. If you make this delta very small, this will capture the area, that slice, that slice. And you compute areas of these slide, slices starting from this till this, till the very end. Okay. And this slice looks like a circle. So when you revolve, when you revolve, if I draw the 3D picture, so when you revolve, so this forms a 3D shape. So it's like a balloon. Think of it like a balloon. Now, once you want to measure a balloon, you consider this circle and compute the area of this circle, which will capture the volume at this point. So very small volume at this point. Okay. And you start from this point to this point. And you take the continuous sum, which is nothing but the integration again. Sir, and um, yeah. Until now, uh, this volume is done with the use of single integral only, sir. Uh, yeah. So we didn't involve double integrals. Okay, sir. Correct. So we just took a revolution around x-axis, and once you revolve, it forms a balloon shape. For finding the volume, what we consider is we consider a small disk here like this. 
and compute the area of this and let it let this be a and you start a from this point to this point you start a from this point to this point and add all the areas and that will give you the complete volume so area at this point will be if you see this forms a disk or a circle and the radius of this circle is f of x right radius of this circle will be f of x and the area will be pi r square pi f of x whole square so area of this small disk will be pi f of x whole square so area will be pi f of x whole square okay or pi f of a whole square at point a it will be f of a right now my a is variable it starts from 0 to 5 so integrate it from 0 to 5 pi f of a whole square d a or if you are interested in writing everything in terms of x you can write it in terms of x now f of x whole square is given as x square into phi minus x by phi plus x let's do that 0 to 5 pi uh, x square into phi minus x by phi plus x dx okay now again uh, the numerator we have x square term denominator we have uh, x term so what you do is the same thing which i did previously this numerator we have 5 x square minus oh actually x cube Right. divided by 5 plus x dx okay so what you can do is you see there is 5 plus x in the denominator and the highest power you just write like this so this is this all comes with techniques okay like i have 5x square minus x cube with me but i somehow want 5 plus x in that factor so if i want 5 plus x since the highest power has minus inside it so what i do is i take minus out and this will become x cube minus 5x square this x cube, if I have to make it as x, I have to take x square common. But if I take x square common, what happens? Or we can work it out with here itself. Already x square is common. So x square is common anyway. We have 5 minus x in the numerator. Now what I will do is I will take minus of x minus 5. okay so if it is x minus 5 in order to make it x plus 5 what i will do is i will add plus 5 and subtract plus 5 if i do that i will get x minus 5 plus 5 minus 5 whole divided by 5 plus x dx now this will become 0 to 5 pi x square now you see this plus 5 i will write it along with x x plus 5 minus 10 divided by 5 plus x dx now this will become minus 0 to 5 pi x square on one side with x plus 5 divided by x plus 5 dx and minus of minus it will become plus integral 0 to 5 10 uh, pi x square into 10 divided by 5 plus x dx so one second could you scroll up hmm. uh, yeah sir so from here we did uh, we pulled out x common oh, no i mean that was already there right mm -hmm. uh, we did plus 5 and minus 5 again 
sir hmm. could you please uh, show the initial steps of this sum sir this one this is where we started we are trying to compute this okay sir and f of x whole square is given to us as like this okay. yes sir uh, now i wrote it like this so minus i pulled out from the numerator outside yes sir I wrote it as x minus five. Now x minus five, I am writing it as x plus five minus ten. So even that will also be x minus five. How I did is adding plus five and minus five, and then I wrote x plus five separately, ten separately, multiplied by x square, and then written it separate. Okay. Yes, sir, and. Uh... I mean, this transformation. Um, do you know already how to uh, proceed for this uh, problem, sir? Or ah, uh, no, no, no. You won't know. This comes with practice only. See, when you have bigger terms in the numerator, bigger powers in the numerator, you okay. try to come up with the factor that is there in the denominator to get uh, to get cancelled to get it cancelled. Okay, something like this. so the numerator thing i just manipulated somehow such that uh, i brought the denominator as one factor minus something some constant okay after this we get this as minus 0 to 5 pi x square dx and this can be computed easily plus 10 pi you can take out 0 to 5 Pi x square by pi plus x dx. Now you do a bit of substitution here. Take pi plus x as u. Then it becomes substitute u as pi plus x. Now du becomes a dx. When x goes to zero, u goes to pi. When x goes to five, u goes to ten. Okay. Now substituting all these things, we are finding this. Okay. Substituting all, we get ten pi integral five to ten pi five plus x whole square. Okay, x square is u minus pi. U minus pi. Yes. Sir, uh, how are we changing the limits? Ah, uh, see, when you take the substitution, okay. u is equals to pi plus x, right? Yes. When x is zero, you just have to substitute x zero here in this expression. What happens to u? U will be pi, right? When x is zero, u is pi. Yes. When x is five, u is five plus five, which is ten. Correct. Yes. That's it. Ah, uh, so now uh, you will have again u in the denominator, something in the numerator which has higher powers. This can be. This can also be computed. Is zero ten pi five to ten pi. Ah, uh, you can expand this u square minus. 10u plus 25 divided by u du, and you can separate the terms out. 
and the last term will give you ln u and the middle term will make you the constant bring uh, give you the constant and the first term ha will have u and you can integrate u and even this can also be integrated finally you will get some many expression okay so you can try it out if you didn't get this then we can solve it tomorrow okay so the main challenge lies in getting out the integral so trying to uh, convert the integrand to the known expression so we know integral x bar a that is well known and then we know integral 1 by u now which is ln ln uh, u and uh, just now in this particular session i just talked about one integral which is integral 0 to 1 1 by root 1 minus x square dx is pi by 2 and uh, there are some standard integrals so convert them to the known standard integral somehow so then you can compute it okay any other doubts in concepts i can take up the slides and explain uh, if you guys wanted Sir, oh. um, in the portion of the week eight. Ah, okay. Sir, okay, uh, just give me one minute, Prithvi. Uh, okay. Are we done with week nine for today? For today, tomorrow also we have week nine session. We will discuss further in that. You guys have. Okay. Uh, if you guys don't have any doubts as of now in week nine, I can. Talk about ticket. Okay, uh, looks like there are no doubts for the you can ask. Yes, sir. Sir, in the week eight, uh, we get lecture five, sir. Okay. Uh, in that uh, integration by substitution. Ah. In that first, uh, for example, if we take a function two uh, x e to the power x. 2x e to the power x. Okay. I mean 2x e to the power x square, sir. 2x e to the power x square. Okay. Yes, uh, first, we are uh, considering uh, x square as u, sir. After that, if we differentiate, you will get me uh, 2x dx, which is equal to d, uh, du. Okay. Now we are trying to integrate this, is it? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, now, uh, what, did, what did you say? What is your substitution? x square is equal to u. x square is equal to u. Correct. Yes, sir. Now, okay. what will happen when you take derivative on both sides? 2x dx is equal to du. Sir. Uh, 2x dx is du. Correct. Yes, uh. So, uh, in the given ex expression, we have, can we substitute like uh, du by dx? e to the power u into dx sir. what about sorry sorry du by dx okay d du by d, uh, in place of 2x you are uh, writing du by dx into e to the power u sir. u and dx and dx and you will cancel out this dx and dx is it yes sir sir but okay. in the uh, given sum they are integrating the they are fixing another function as uh, v of x is equal to e to the power x and v dash x is equal to e to the power x that one uh, i cannot understand that double uh, substitution sir. another substitution they are making sir that one i cannot understand what is the another substitution they are making First substitution is uh, as I as I said here, sir. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. And another substitution is they are substituting v of x is equal to e to the power x and uh, v dash x is equal to e to the power x. V dash x is e to, e the, to power the power x. Okay. And I don't know uh, how to proceed after this one, sir. 
Okay. Okay. Uh, Mm -hmm. Okay, what they did is for this, you need to understand this clearly. So, integral some function of u, some function, okay. So f of some g of x, if you have some g prime of x, dx, okay. So then this antiderivative or we call it as integral of this will be equals to some a, okay, I'll use their uh, the slides expression. Only. So if you have something like g of u of x, times u prime of x dx then this is the antiderivative function a g u of x which looks like g of u of x or how will it look uh, this will be integral g of uh, some y dy okay if there are some uh, limits a to b uh, then this y limits will be u of a to u of b so for this again uh, if you know g of y then simply you integrate this and here in this particular question what happens is your g of x will be e power x here so this is if you treat g of x as e power x and u of x as x square now this is e power x square is g of u of x which is e power x square and this is u prime of x correct so this integral can be written as this integral so just simply g of x g of y g of y which is e power y dy now if you see here e power y is uh, derivative will be e power y. So, therefore, integral of e power y will be e power y only. Okay. Now, that is what uh, they meant, I guess. So, their v prime of x, uh, which is uh, which is the same thing. So, hmm. so they, they said this, what is the compo, ah, see this, this, this all comes from composition rule. So, you know composition rule, right? So, if you want to integrate uh, some g prime of u of x times u prime of x dx this will be g of x g of u of x yes okay right now you take uh, g of x now you can easily see that uh, you take u of x as uh, x square 
and g of x as e power x but then you also know that g prime of x is e power x if you derivate e power x you will get e power x only now g prime of u of x is again e power x square so e power x square looks like g prime of u of x and this 2x is u prime of x now if you have to integrate this or the anti derivative of this will be g of u of x which is e power x square so that is why uh, they have again consider that we got this e power u but that is v prime of x which is e power x from this they got v v of x which is e power x and then the answer would be v of u of x which is e power x square but if you are confused about that uh, too many substitutions if you know this uh, direct thing integral of u e power x is e power x then this will simply be e power u you substituted u as uh, x square right x square as u if you resubstitute it back you will get e power x square okay if you if you are unable to get that v of x uh, u prime of x uh, no worries if you can able to get to the answer okay sir sir and uh, could you please explain me the uh, example uh, f of x is equal to 2x divided by 1 plus x square whole square 1 plus x square whole square ah yes sir uh, so for this we need to find the anti derivative is it yes sir so anti derivative now you should be very much clear that anti derivative is integral of this right now again if you can clearly see that 1 plus x square if i take uh, it as u Now, I am just making the substitution. Now, you see 2x dx, derivative on both sides, you will get du, okay, which is the numerator 2x dx. The whole 2x dx will simply be du. And this will be 1 by 1 by u square du. And this integral will be. minus 1 by u. So the antiderivative will be minus 1 by u plus c plus some constant. Again you substitute it back. u is taken as 1 plus x square. If I substitute that I will get one, minus 1 by 1 plus x square plus some constant c. So this will be the antiderivative. Yes sir. Sir uh, in this method I can uh, understand easily sir. Mm -hmm. But see, uh, okay, I understood. I understand that uh, that u prime, u ah, of yes, u sir, prime sir. substitutions and all. Yeah, that is what. Uh, see, uh, if you are able to understand that method, it's fine. If you are unable to understand that, do not worry. If you can able to understand to work this out using one way, that is fine. Okay. But in one or the other cases, any one of those two methods will be working. Will, will work, yeah, yeah. Not any one. Both method works. But uh, yeah, it, it depends on the time that it takes for particular question. Okay. 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 Yes. Sir. Yeah. So yeah, as I said, uh, there will be a session tomorrow also. So you can work out uh, week 9 uh, problems today and tomorrow morning. If you still have any doubt, you can come back tomorrow and we can discuss. Sir, lastly, can you explain question 6 of practice assignment? Okay. Week 9, is it? Yeah, yeah. I don't think it will take a lot of time because it's just uh, identities, but I'm not aware of any. Okay.
क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्स ओके ओके आई विल आई विल शेयर दिस स्क्रीन इन स्टेट ऑफ टाइम आई थिंक आई कैन एक्सप्लेन इट ओके ओके लॉग फोर टू द बेस टू इज वन दैट इज रॉन्ग राइट लॉग फोर टू द बेस टू इज टू या टू and if b is in between 0 to 1 and x is also in between 0 to 1 then log x to the base b is less than 0 see if b is uh, between see this has some graphs right like log x how will log x behave when between Sir, 0 I don't to 1 this is true because uh, for example if log b is uh, 0.2 and x is 0.4 right mm -hmm. then it will our answer will be 2 so uh, b is wrong clearly good uh, that method works like just substituting and checking also works so to make that option wrong one example is sufficient to make that option correct then it requires some uh, like you should prove it okay uh okay then option b is also wrong clearly uh, from your example now comes option c now if log log x to the base 5 to the base uh, 3 is 1 then x is 125 so now log something to the base 3 is 1 then what would be that something okay now log x to the base 5 treat it as like some y what will be log y to the base 3 if log y to the base 3 is 1 what will be y 3 sir 3 so log 3 to the base 3 is 1 right yes uh, so now you know that log x to the base 5 is 3 if log x to the base 5 is 3 take e power on both sides Or five power on both sides. What will we get? X as one twenty five, right? So you see this. You see the inside thing will be three. Write down that now. Log x to the base five is three. If log x to the base five is three. When will that happen? When will log x to the base five will be three? When that x is five cube. Then log five cube to the base five will be three. Therefore, x should be one twenty five. So this option is correct. Is this okay, Namay? Yes, sir. Now again the conditions. If if b is in between zero to one, x is also in between zero to one, and x is greater than b. now log x to the base b is greater than 1 how do we do this okay let's come to that uh, in a bit before that let's see the below one. if b is in b is between 0 to 1 and x is lesser than y but both x and y are greater than 0 what will happen to the inequality okay see whenever base is between 0 to 1 that means you can write it as 1 by something 1 by something very large very big greater than 1 right so any real number which is in between 0 to 1 to make it a number greater than 1 uh, you just have to write 1 by something which is greater than 1 right so what uh or if you have understandings about the graphs of logarithms then that would also do the show okay so i will draw the graph here itself within one so when will the graph look like this
when the base is so let's say log log x to the base b okay so when will the graph of logarithm looks like this is b greater than 1 less than 1 Greater than one. Greater than one. What happens if B is less than one? How will the graph look? Negative. This is how it looks. So if you guys are comfortable with the Desmos graphing plot, just open Desmos and give different different values for B and C. So this is B less than one. So now you can clearly see, and this is the point one, and this is X. Okay, when b is 0 to 1 so that means this pink curve and x is also between 0 to 1 this is a decreasing function okay you see that you see this this is this is when b is between 0 to 1 and x is between 0 to 1 This is how it is, and this is always positive. You see, this is always positive. That is why the option, which is option B, is less than zero, is incorrect. Okay. And now, you see, x is greater than b. Or am I missing something? Okay, no, no, uh, we are correct. So this, this is how the graphs look. Okay. Now there is something we should also worry about, which is what happens when x is greater than v or when b is greater than x. And you look at logarithm expressions again. So if x is greater than b, that means the term here is greater than b. That means it is greater than b power 1. That means the whole expression will be greater than 1. Correct? So here, at 1, this will be exactly equals to b. Okay. When this log x base b takes 1, when x is equals to b. Okay, when b is greater than 1, so when b is less than 1, okay, this is b is less than 1 case, b lies between 0 to 1, and this is what it happens. And when b is greater than 1, that means b lies this side, and even here also, exactly the value will be 1 when x is exactly equals to b. And when b is less than x, that means b lies somewhere here, then it will become within 0 to 1 when b is greater than 1. Again, when b is less than x, when b is less than x, when in this particular case, b is less than 1 and b is less than x, then b will be somewhere in between this. At that point, the value will be higher. Okay, log 
x to the base b will be greater than 1 if b is less than x and when b is less than 1 also. So b is less than x and b is less than 1. Okay. Is this okay? See, place B in such a way that the output is 1. Okay. Then x value will become B. Okay. This is place B. X take, if x takes B, this will be 1. When x takes any value less than B, that is this. At that point, this is higher than 1. When in this pink, pink, on this pink curve. When will we on the pink curve? When B is less than 1. Okay. So, log X to the base B will be greater than 1. If B is, sorry, if X is less than B and B is less than 1. Okay. And log X to the base B will be less than 1 if x is greater than b and b is less than b. okay so till here so when b is less than 1 you see you you should consider this this pink and when b is greater than 1 you will go into this but i don't think none of the options uh, it is uh, talking about b is greater than 1 Every option talks about B less than 1. So what we can do is you can ignore this part. B greater than 1 part. Okay. So this will be B when B is between 0 to 1. And when there is no B here. So B, B, B point will be here. And what else is given? Yeah, if x is greater than b and if x is between 0 to 1 and uh, uh, b is also between 0 to 1, 0 to 1, then log x to the base b will be less than 1, but in the options it is given that it, is, it will be greater than 1. So that is wrong. And the next option is you consider two points x and y. Log x to the base b will be greater than log y to the base b. So, you consider any two points when b is less than 1, you consider x and you consider some y where x is less than y. Okay, that's all is given. Then log x to the base b will be lesser than, uh, sorry, greater than log y to the base b. So, you see that this log x is a decreasing function when b is less than 1. Therefore, it satisfies the decreasing property, right? When x is less than y, f of x will be greater than f of y. Here f of x is log x to the base b. So option E will be correct. Okay, option C and option E will be correct. Okay. Fine then. Uh, okay, so that's all for today. Uh, we will meet tomorrow. Then. Thanks. Hello?